yes, some of you yes, some of you no. So you might want to ask, where does polymethylene foam is usually applied? Okay, thank you. But first, before that, you can see that polymethylene foam is actually, in simple words, it's a cellular composite in the form of sponge-like structures. Okay? Back to the question, where does it usually apply? So there are many applications of polyurethane foam and several of them including marine aeronautic, automotive, pipeline, insulation and also packaging. And here are the sample application, the exact application of polyurethane foam from safe fields. Now we can establish here from these many pictures that polyurethane foam is widely applied. Now here comes the issue. Conventional polyurethane foam is made from petroleum based product. Now, when I mention petroleum, all of you have already known what the problem is, right? It's the depleting supply of petroleum. But wait, what if I told you that you can actually make polyurethane foam from palm oil and further enhance the property by adding nanoclay into the foam formulation? How, you might ask? Stay tuned to find out. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and good morning. My name is Muhammad Hazib Muskibri and today I'll be presenting to you a topic on bio-based polyurethane foam with nano reinforcements. Is it the alternative that we seek to solve global issues? You might have an answer after my presentation. So here's how I'm going to present today. First is on the introduction which I have given you in the early part of this presentation which I'll give you a simple review on the application of polyurethane foam in industry and domestic. The next is on the background of the material. Now, in this part, I'll be elaborating more on the constituent materials to make polyurethane foam. Next is on the research motivation. I'll emphasize why did I chose to study polyurethane foam and also on the significance of the material. Next is on the fabrication and characterization of the foam. And lastly, I'll be giving a brief summary and concluding remarks on the topic. So let's get started with the first part, which is background of the material. Now we have no we have known when polyurethane foam is applied in industry and domestic. So one might continue to ask, what is actually polyurethane? Now, polyurethane, the word poly in front of the polyurethane means that it is a type of polymer, just like PVC, polyvinyl chloride and also polyethylene. Now, if it is a polymer, it must have a repeating unit, right? So the repeating unit for this is NCOOH, referred to urethane, the monomer. So basically, polyurethane is a product when you react polyol with polyisocyanate. But in industries, what usually is done is we add some other substance so, uh, so we can obtain a better, a better foam. For instance, we can add blowing agent to induce the formation of bubbles inside the foam, surfactant to prevent the foam from collapsing, and additives. Now, additives can be anything. It can be carbon nanotubes to enhance the mechanical strength of the foam. It can be clear with other material so that your foam can be fireproof. So it is essential for us to control all of these materials because basically there are a lot of them. As you can see from these classifications here and the examples of it. But for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to focus only on this type of material, which are palm oil polyol, PMDI, distilled water as the blowing agent, polydiametic saloxane, which is a silicon surfactant, and also as the additives, monsmorelinite, which is organically modified in the type of another plane. Moving on to my research motivation. Now, in this part, we are actually dealing with the whys of the research. So, for the simple of your understanding, we are going to divide the, the question why into three parts, which are why polyurethane, why palm oil polyurethane, and lastly, why nanoclay. So, let's try to answer the first question first. Why polyurethane? In the pool of material that can be used to produce foam, why did I choose polyurethane? The answer to that, the first one, is because polyurethane is very versatile. Now, as you can see from this chart, if we manipulate the amount of the constituent materials, 
you can actually get a wide array of collagen products. For example, if you use more polyol, we can actually get a more flexible polyurethane. And if you use more isocyanate, we can actually get a rigid polyurethane foam. So this can actually determine the end properties. For example, the flexible polyurethane foam is usually used as a cushion and can be applied in industries like cars, automotive. But rigid polyurethane is, can be used as insulation purposes. Next is on because polyurethane is what we utilize. Comparing among the polymers, as you can see here, in the market, uh, in the US market in 2015, the production of polyurethane alone reached up to 4.5 billion pounds. And that is on 2015 alone. And if we compare between 2009 and 2015, the trend, we can safely say that the following year, the numbers will continue to increase. More on that, if we study on the bio market share alone, 95% of polyurethane is produced in the form of foams, be it flexible foam or rigid foam. So this shows how important it is for us to study about this material. And lastly, the reason why I chose polyurethane is because polyurethane, the property of polyurethane can be tailored easily. Now I mentioned in the first reason, if you, you, you manipulate the, the constituent materials, you can actually determine, uh, you, you can actually determine a voice, you can get, I'm sorry, a wide array of polyurethane product, right? So, uh, by manipulating the constituent materials, you can actually get a product that is lightweight, lightweight, uh, a product, uh, polyurethane foam which is stronger, higher insertion properties, or even higher energy absorbance. So let's move on to the next question. Why did I choose palm oil based polyurethane? Now, obviously, to answer the question that I addressed earlier, which is depleting petroleum supply. But not only that, we have the problem of sustainability and environmental impact issues. Now, but one might continue to ask, why palm oil? Why not other bio products? We have red seed oil, we have canola oil, we have soybean oil. Now, the answer to that question is because palm oil is actually abundant in Malaysia. As you can see, uh, in 2015, I think it has been corrected by my friend here, 2016. Uh, in 2015, Malaysia is the second largest producer. But as said by my friend, in 2016, Malaysia is the largest producer of palm oil. This shows how important it is for us to use palm oil as a product. Now, from this, uh, from this information, we can actually say that we are trying to use local products to solve global issues from local for global. Now moving on to the next question. Okay. The last question is why don't clay is used as the additives? Now the reason is the same. It's because we want to solve the sustainability and environmental issues. So nano clay is one of the green alternatives. Okay. Not only that, this is because nano clay can actually be modified, and the modification is done so that uh, to increase the compatibility between the non-clay and the polymer it is used into. Okay, we have learned a bit on the application and the background of the material. So let's try to learn how to produce this foam because it is actually not a difficult step. The first one is uh, by mixing all the materials which is the polyol, blowing agent, surfactant and also the additives. After you have mixed them, we need to stir them form a homogeneous solution. Only after you have formed a homogeneous solution, only then you can mix them with isocyanate. Now, if you remember the early part of my presentation, when isocyanate meets polyol, it will start to form. The reaction takes place. Now, let's stop at this, the first step for a second. Does this image remind you of anything? Nothing? How about this? Okay, even though in the glass of titanate, you have foams at the top of it, it's not the same as polyurethane foam. So, to further increase the understanding about the fabrication of process of polyurethane, let's watch a video of me fabricating polyurethane foam step by step. Let's watch it. Okay, 
Uh, so here's the first step is actually mixing the four materials followed by stirring the mixture and next followed by mixing. Okay? After you have mixed them, the, the process will start, the forming process will start. Now, here comes the best part. Forming process can be divided into two, which is free rise forming and also concentrated rise forming. Now, free rise forming happens as you let the forming process inside an open container, as you can see here, but concentrated rise is actually carried out inside a closed rigid container. The purpose of doing concentrated rise is actually we want to control the density and also the shape of the final product. As you can see here, all beautiful shape. Okay? Now that you have produced your own foam, you need to test it. Is it strong enough? Is it suitable enough to be used in certain areas and application? Now, among the many characterization process that can be done, one of them is we need to test for the molecular structure. Now, to test for the molecular structure, what can be done is by performing Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy or FTIR. So here is the basic um, spectro, basic spectro for polyurethane foam. Now, what I want to highlight here is these three peaks, which is C double bond O, N H, and C N. Now, these three peaks are the, are the characteristic peaks for polyurethane. Now, uh, from here, you can simply say that polyurethane foam is successfully produced. The next test that we might want to do is on microstructure. So, we can perform SEM or scanning electron microscopy on the test. What the two main distinguishing characteristics that can be obtained from this test is whether, oh sorry, whether the foam is open cell or closed cell foam. Now, this also can determine the end property of the foam. For instance, open cell foam can actually absorb water but not closed cell foam. So that's why closed cell foam is usually used in applications in maritime but not open cell foam. And also, closed cell foam actually have higher thermal insulating properties. So that's why Polyurethane foam can also, rigid protein foam for closed cell, can also be used in insulation purposes. Okay, on the mechanical properties of foam, mechanical, mechanical properties can be obtained by performing specific mechanical tests on the sample. For example, on the compression and tensile test. Okay, compression is basically simply, as you can see in this animation, is pressing the foam together until it starts to deform and tensile is pulling them apart until it fractures as you can see in this animation <laughs> now the purpose of this is we want to obtain the mechanical strength because certain application in industries requires specific level of mechanical strength for instance, uh, to be used in industries the compression strength of any polymeric foam needs to be at least 180 kilopascal okay, and lastly moving on to the thermal properties of the foam that can be done. Uh, we can actually do TGA or thermal gravimetric analysis on the foam. This is done to get the thermal resistivity of the foam or in simpler words, how the foam withstands test to heat and fire. By mentioning fire, obviously, we need to burn the foam. Okay, as you can see in this animation also, the foam on the right burns easily but not foam on the left. Why? Because foam on the left, there is some flame retarding materials that have been added to the foam. So that's why it's hard for him to catch fire. Okay, but this is not actually, this is not the actual test for TGA. But I just want to share with you the concept of heat resistance in polymer. Oh, sorry. Okay, to conclude on today's presentation, I think I have given you a brief but concise introduction on the topic of bio-based polyurethane foam with bio-based nano reinforcement. Now, based on the presentation, I can simply say that bio-based nano composites have great potentials to be used in industrial application. Not only because it is green, but because of its versatility and also it is uh, it is in tailoring its properties. More on that. We are actually using local products to solve 
global issues. Now, who would have thought that these two humble earthly resources can produce these two magnificent products that, when we use together, can form one outstanding composite? The late Randy Posh once said that engineering isn't about perfect solution, it's about doing the best you can with limited resources. Now, I think I can relate to this and it is suitable with today's theme of presentation because as an engineering research student, I'm doing my best to, to contribute in solving the humanity problem by what, with whatever limited resources and knowledge I have. Luckily, that's all for me. Thank you for listening. Salam alaikum